Hey everyone, today I'm going to be attempting to boil water in my hand. So first I'm going to be using something called a hand boiler. So I have some liquid water in these sealed glass tubes here. Now watch what happens when I hold it in my hand. You can see the liquid goes up there. And then it just starts bubbling. Look how vigorously it's bubbling now. So you can see that as long as I heat the bottom of it, you notice how the air expands from the bottom, it goes to the top, and because it's cooler up there, it contracts. It doesn't need as much of a volume up there. So you can get a little bit more continual bubbling if you just give it a little bit more heat than the heat of your hand, like putting a little heater next to it. Now the thing is, this is called a hand boiler, but what's going on here is this isn't actually boiling the water. What's happening is this is a sealed tube on the bottom here. And when I hold it in my hand, it heats up the air in the bottom and it expands and pushes the air up the tube and it bubbles out the top there. And so it's not really boiling per se. So let's try to figure out a way that I can actually boil water in my hand and not just make the water bubble like that. Well, I can't boil water at a normal temperature like 100 degrees Celsius. I'd have to find another way to actually boil the water. So I'd have to be using the heat from my hand to boil the water. But another trick we can do on the water is just to reduce the pressure above the water and that will cause it to boil at a lower temperature. So if we just get my trusty Action Lab vacuum chamber kit and we reduce the pressure inside and I hold it in my hand, my hand should provide enough heat to the water that it will actually boil the water. Okay, screw this on. Now normally in my vacuum chamber kit, this would be a hand pump, but I'm hooking it to the electric pump so we can get a continuous flow here. Okay, let's hold it in my hand. Turn on the vacuum chamber. Three, two, one. Okay, the pressure's reduced in there. There it goes, boiling water in my hand. So right now there was enough heat in the water already that it could boil with its current temperature. But as it continues to boil, it's going to drop in temperature and it's going to not boil as fast as it reduces its temperature. So the water's already getting cold in my hand. But if I can keep providing enough heat in my hand, then it should continue to boil. So right now, this is the equivalent of the water sitting on your stove getting temperature from the hot fire below it. So my hand is actually providing the heat to the water in there. So boiling is actually an endothermic reaction. It requires heat to boil. That means that as something is just boiling, if you don't add heat to it, it's going to get colder and colder and colder as you reduce the pressure. But if you don't allow it to get colder, you can keep vigorous boiling happening by continually adding heat to it. So now I can feel the heat leaving my hand. This water feels cold in my hand now. So if I didn't continue to add heat with my hand here, because I'm continually sucking out the water vapor from the headspace here, the temperature would continue to drop. And in fact, it would continue to drop so much that the water could actually get to its triple point and freeze. And you can do it with water. You could even do it with different liquids. I've even done it with liquid nitrogen before. If you don't provide a heat source to it and you insulate it really well in the vacuum chamber, you can boil it so much that the heat, the heat gets sucked out of it so much, the temperature reduces so that it goes to its freezing point. So you can actually freeze nitrogen in a vacuum chamber. It's pretty cool. But in this case, I'm adding heat to it from its environment by sitting in my hand so that it's not going to get to its triple point, but it's just gonna to continue to boil in my hand until it evaporates all the way. Now, if you don't have a vacuum chamber, you can do the same thing by heating up a jar or a flask with water in it and causing it to boil. And then once it's boiling, you're gonna take it off the heat and cap it as soon as you take it off the heat. And then you're gonna let it cool down a little bit. 
Now what's happening here is once you remove the flask of boiling water off the heater and then cap it, it creates a partial vacuum in the headspace because it was filled with water vapor that was a gas or a vapor and then it condenses into liquid water and, which is a lot less volume and so it creates a partial vacuum in that headspace there. And when you create a vacuum in the headspace there, it lowers the necessarily t necessary temperature needed to boil the liquid water. Now the sides of the flask are still warm a little bit. And so if you swirl the water around and hold it in your hand, you can actually get enough temperature needed to boil the water at that reduced pressure. And so it begins to boil again, even though it's not on the main heat source anymore. So you can actually hold the boiling water in your hand. But this effect only happens for a little bit. It's not long lasting. If you want long lasting boiling water in your hand that is actually using the heat from your hand to boil it, then you need a vacuum chamber. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comments section. I'll try to get to them. And if you want to check out the Action Lab experiment boxes, one of them is this Action Lab uh, vacuum chamber kit. You can check it out at theactionlab.com. And if you haven't subscribed yet, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.